everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Expedition Trains. I am beyond excited right now. We are here in the beautiful coastal sunny city of San Diego, California and we have a real treat for you guys. We have three locations to film here today and one of those locations which you are watching right now is right behind me over here at the Old Point Loma Lighthouse which is right over the mountain. You can barely see it and I'm really excited for you guys to watch the next couple episodes because you're in for a real 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 treat. And as always, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you can get notified whenever we have a new video, and dim the lights, raise the volume, and grab some popcorn. And without further ado, let's get started. Located in the Cabrillo National Monument in San Diego, California, the Point Loma Lighthouse was constructed in 1855 by the United States government after California was admitted into the Union, and it served until it was deactivated in 1891 after it was replaced by the new Point Loma Lighthouse. It was later transformed into a museum after the land it calls home was converted into a national park in 1913 by then-President Woodrow Wilson. During its 37 years of service, it was host to 10 lighthouse keepers, with Robert Decatur Israel being the longest person to serve as keeper during its time of service. He served from 1873 to 1891 for a total of 18 years of service. We are here at the Old Point Loma Lighthouse. Right behind me is where two entities are set to haunt the lighthouse. And it's crazy to think that this lighthouse has been around since the 1800s, 1855 to be exact. And the two entities that are said to haunt this place are that of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo and Captain Israel. Who are those people you might ask? Well, Captain Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was the first guy to land right here in this area in San Diego. And Captain Israel is the last lighthouse keeper that lived right here and took care of this place. Before this lighthouse was decommissioned in 1891 to make way for a new, better one that would help the ships out better because where we are right now, it's kind of high up. And it was hard for the ships in the bay right here to see the light. So it didn't really, you know, work all that well for the ships. So that's one of the reasons why it was decommissioned. But as legend has it, Captain Israel loved this place so much that even though it's out of order, he stayed here. And it sets to still haunt this place, watching over its grounds. Throughout the years, visitors to the lighthouse claim to have witnessed paranormal activity. Inside the lighthouse museum, witnesses claim to hear heavy footsteps coming from the floors above, particularly in the kitchen and living room areas of the house. Sudden drops of temperature are also reported near the entrance of the spiral staircase which leads to the top of the lighthouse. This is believed to be the embodiment of a long-deceased caretaker. And inside, there are two bedrooms in the house where witnesses claim to hear a low demonic moaning when standing inside either of the two rooms. The main spirit that is said to inhabit the lighthouse is that of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, along with the spirits of previous caretakers, specifically that of Captain Israel, who some believe his spirit had returned to the lighthouse after his death. To add further haunting, the lighthouse is located just a few miles shy of the Point Loma National Cemetery, where witnesses claim to see hazy apparitions and disembodied voices after dusk. The lighthouse is closed right now due to the pandemic, but even though it's closed and there's nobody in here, I feel like there's someone in here. Like, I feel like a presence. And to give you an insight as to what people report happening here is that people, when they're inside the building, particularly downstairs, they hear heavy boot footsteps above them. This lighthouse is two stories high and people report having cold spots. People report hearing voices and just overall loud footsteps. And sometimes people even report seeing a shadow in the corner of their eye. And unfortunately, I'm not able to go inside to give you guys a better look, but I do feel like there is definitely something here. Captain Israel was appointed as assistant lighthouse keeper in 1871 and promoted to full-time lighthouse keeper in 1874, with his wife Maria taking the role as assistant lighthouse keeper. They both lived in the house, making sure the lighthouse was illuminated every night. And for the 18 years of service that Israel gave to the lighthouse, they watched their children, 
and grandchildren grow with one of their grandsons being born in the lighthouse. Maria even wrote a book about her experiences living in the lighthouse titled Life at the Lighthouse family memories. After the new lighthouse was built, the Israels took over at the new lighthouse until Robert Israel was dismissed in 1892. He died at the age of 81 in January of 1908 and was buried at the Fort Roscrans National Cemetery. Hello, um, I'm aware that Captain Israel still resides here. Captain Israel, if you're here, do you mind making a noise inside the lighthouse? Oh, oh, I just heard something in there right now. Oh, guys, I'm literally, I have chills right now. I heard a noise in there right now. I heard like a, like something move in there. I, okay, okay, I gotta relax. Okay, so I was standing right there and I literally heard something in there and I got this, <laughs> I felt this shock to me right now. And I don't know if that was, I was attempting to speak to Captain Israel, but I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm a little spooked right now. I'm gonna attempt to go back and see if I can hear the noise again, just to make sure that I did hear something. I don't mean to disturb you, Captain Israel, but if that was you, do you mind making a noise again? The story has it that you love this place so much that you refuse to leave, that even after your death, you came back here to, to look after the lighthouse. I don't know if it's shaky right now, guys. I apologize. Like, I heard something. And in fact, I still feel a little shooken up, but I'm gonna try to open the door see if I can get a reaction or anything. If I can't talk to Captain Israel, can I at least get something from Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo? Nothing. Visitors have claimed to experience a mist thicker than fog which lingers overnight and disappears by morning. One visitor by the name of Deidre recounts an experience she had at the lighthouse many years ago. As her story goes, she visited the lighthouse and climbed up the lighthouse staircase when she heard a low moaning sound which got louder and louder as she climbed up. When she finally reached the top, the air temperature suddenly dropped and her eyes were met with a tall, dark apparition that took the shape of a man. The figure then flew right past her and towards the staircase, going down like a waterfall. Similar encounters have been reported over the years. Although the location is no longer considered actively paranormal, we believe the spirit of those who have served at the lighthouse remain at the location, keeping watch over their lighthouse as the spiritual keepers of the land. They may, on occasion, make their presence known, and if you're lucky enough, you might just spot them. All right, you guys, we reached the end of our investigation, and I can't definitively say whether this place is haunted or not. I mean, I had an experience over there for sure. Like, I feel like I heard something in there, but just on that one experience, I feel like I can't, I can't say for sure if this place is haunted or not, but I'm hoping that we can come back one day once this horrible pandemic is over and we can actually go inside and take a look inside and try to get a reaction out of either Captain Israel or whatever is in there. So I'm going to try my best to come back. And I have to say something. I don't know if it's just bad luck, but our cameras have been malfunctioning in our, in our equipment as well. It's almost like as if something doesn't want us recording here. And I don't know if that's just bad luck or maybe a paranormal interference. I don't know, you decide. But as of right now, I have to say that whether or not the lighthouse is haunted still is, without a doubt, unsolved. Join us next time.